Let's bring in Paul Bonicelli, former Bush 43 foreign policy advisor. Paul, what is your take on Assange saying, and to be clear, he said Russian government and part of the Russian state. He says that again and again, but it leaves wiggle room for it possible for, to come from somebody within the country. Yeah, I think it leaves a lot of wiggle room, and um, I think we don't know yet. I think that if you looked at it um, with uh, the, the way you would look at any kind of situation like this, you would say it's most likely that it was Russian government directed, if not actually an operation of the Russian government, or that they had knowledge of it. Uh, but we don't know that yet, and I think that we should make our decisions about how to treat Russia based upon Russia as a geopolitical friend or ally, not whether or not they actually tried to hack into any part of this election, because everybody is spying on everybody all the time if they're a strong country and if they want to survive. Paul. How what do you make of how Donald Trump has been responding to this? What you heard from Sean Spicer as well, because he starts Donald Trump, the president-elect, will start talking about this, and we should be clear, as Sean Spicer was, that this was not a hacking of our election. This was a hacking of the DNC by by Russians, according to the intelligence information that's been released so far. So there is an evidence that, like the voting machines were hacked. However, Donald Trump, he gets into the weeds when he's talking about this and he kind of dovetails to no computer's safe, you should write it down, and my son uses the computer all the time. Does that help him? Actually, it should, and I think that it does, because most people, of course, uh, the voters uh, who supported him are expecting him to behave this way. And what I mean by that is, uh, as an unconventional president, Donald Trump is from this business world. He wants the table he's negotiating at. He wants the context in which he's negotiating to be of his design. That's why he's not going to let the media or the Democrats or even Republicans tell him, Putin is a really evil guy. You've got to be mean about him with us right now. The Democrats have no credibility on that because obviously for seven years it didn't matter that Putin was that way. And the Republicans in the Congress sometimes are probably forgetting he has a different way of doing it. If anyone believes Donald Trump is going to uh, look forward to an administration where he's the puppy dog of P Putin, they totally missed what happened the last 18 uh, months and pretty much the last the, 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 the years of Donald Trump's career. I don't expect him to be weak in the face of Putin, even if I didn't agree with everything he did. He wants the context of any kind of relationship he has to be designed by him. Uh, Paul, uh, do you think uh, the Russians were different from everyone else in the sense that most people thought Hillary Clinton was going to win this election. Do you think the Russians thought that Trump was going to win this election or that they could actually have a major influence on this election? Steve, I think that is a very good possibility, but I do think above all what the Russians wanted to do is demonstrate that our vaunted democratic system uh, that they sarcastically think of is really not that good. Now, they know better than that. They know that our society is the strongest in the world. But the sowing of doubt is what they wanted to do, whether it was Trump or Hillary. You could make a case that they wanted either one of them to win, and they would be pretty sound, I think. But above all, they wanted to demonstrate they can do what they want. They've done that for eight years under Obama, and that uh, we should not have so much trust in our system, besides which Putin is embarrassed about the state of Russia. He knows that it is not anything close to a stable, orderly, and certainly free society. And he wants to denigrate those things to feel better about his own regime. Well, Morgan, I want to bring up the, the timing of these sanctions. Mm -hmm. Clearly politically motivated. You have a Obama administration that has been weak and feckless with Russia from day one, whether you talk about Ukraine or Syria, and now all of a sudden they impose Crimea. sanctions. Crimea and the sanctions, the ones against the intelligence agency and officials, they don't, these are people and agencies that don't really have any interaction with the United States anyway. And, yeah, and it's important to note, Dagan, and I spent a large part of my career at the U.S. Treasury uh, actually working on sanctions against Iran and other entities. Sanctions should always be a bipartisan effort. Uh, this is something that should not be about Republicans or Democrats. Um, and, and quite frankly, I think they're much better when it's like in the case of Sid Zada, which were the Iranian sanctions that went through the Congress. Because whenever you do something like that, it's a bipartisan effort. Both parties, um, you know, are 
pushing sanctions against whatever entity. So, so the problem with the sanctions is they're a day late and a dollar short. Uh, and if President Trump comes in and wants to get rid of them, he can. There's no oversight in Congress on, on these particular well, Russian sanctions. Senator, uh, Lin Senators Lindsey Graham and John McCain, they want tougher sanctions than this. But they, Graham in particular wanted to wait until the President-elect Trump had been inaugurated and you have the new Congress in place. But does that set up a divide between some Republican senators and the Trump administration based on the language we've heard from Trump? Well, I'll also include that Senator Ben Cardin from Maryland, ranking Democrat on foreign relations, doesn't think that the Obama sanctions are enough as well. So there's always going to be a difference of opinion. I think the congressional leadership understands that as the incoming president, Donald Trump, gets to set the priorities, they're going to make a robust case that among those priorities should be an expansion of sanctions beyond the executive order that expires with President Obama and do it through some sort of legislative action. But I think what you see with Donald Trump is that he wants to focus on the broader bilateral Russian-U.S. relationship that to the, our discussion has really been deconstructive, certainly not positive for the American interest. You know, Steve, you brought up a lot of the things that we've done wrong with Russia. How about surrendering our missile defense in Eastern Europe? So we have which eight happened, years. It, it, which happened very early Almost on. immediately. We right. have, have eight years of just complete weakness when it's come to dealing with you. Do, do you think it's uh, telling that when Vladimir Putin talked about upgrading his nuclear program, Donald Trump comes out with a tweet and says, we'll match any, exceed anybody in the world, any place, any time. That's, ex that's exactly not, right. Not, not, not traditional diplomacy, but certainly got the alpha male out there. You want to challenge <laughs> yeah. me? Yeah. Uh, don't, don't, don't <laughs> do it. And peace through strength is back. That's what else it shows. I just can't well. wait for Trump and Putin to have a flex off. Uh, <laughs> Paul, I, I do want to ask you, with what we've seen, the Trump response to the Russian hack, what we've heard from even Republican senators, how does that impact the confirmation of ExxonMobil CEO Rex Tillerson as Secretary of State? Who has been opposed to Russian sanctions in the past? Uh, exactly. And, and I do think that Mr. Tillerson is like Mr. Trump in that he can explain the world from which he comes, how it makes perfect sense that his gifts, his experience, what he does is relevant to this. And um, if you know anything about the life of Rex Tillerson, he is an American. He is a Texan. He loves this country. He has always served in a way that promotes the interest of wherever he's working, which makes perfect sense. We all want to hire people who put the interest of the organization first, and he'll do that with the United States. And I think he'll convince plenty of people. He's quite well spoken. As we know, if you read the story, he convinced a jury. Uh, when he had jury duty, I think he convinced these senators, or certainly make it very hard for them to oppose a guy that's going to be a pretty impressive figure in front of the American people.